Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Com Report wherever you get your podcast you're watching on YouTube. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You can find us there as part of Empire Media, A-M-P-I-R-E. Always much appreciated when you tune in and you can read my work on ESPN.com. All the coaching news throughout, not just involving Washington, but every team, because all these other coaching higher, or coaching vacancies affects one another. So what happens in Atlanta, could affect what happens in Washington. One-stop shopping, go to ESPN.com for all the latest news for the coaching vacancies with the commanders and everybody else. So also don't forget, I'm going to be doing the live stream show with Bram Weinstein, the voice of the commanders, Tuesday night, 7.30 Eastern time. Looking ahead, man, lots to discuss. How good is this opening? To me, it's one of the better ones out there, period. Why is that? We'll get into, I'm going to touch on that a little bit today. I'm going to get into that a lot tomorrow night with Bram. And yes, we're coming from a Washington perspective, but you look around the league and this is based on what I'm also hearing from other people. So, but anyways, today's a big day. Monday, they made the move. They fired Ron Rivera, but there's a lot of stuff going on here too. And they're quickly, quickly, quickly moving forward. So let's get to the news. Again, they fired Rivera. They also received permission. Or they requested permission to speak with Adam Peters. Do believe he's going to be interviewing here this week. Um, <clears throat> one thing to know about Peters, who's the assistant GM in San Francisco, a couple of things. One, I had Nick Wagner, who covers the 49ers for ESPN on my podcast a couple of weeks ago. And we specifically talked about Adam Peters, his role with the 49ers, what he does there. Now, in the past, he didn't he was reluctant to leave. In fact, that was, I remember talking to people a few months ago about him, and the word was then. Well, they're not sure if he'd want to leave San Francisco. He's from there. He's got all this responsibility there. Clearly, he's intrigued. And I think you have to look at this is this would be a guy who's not afraid to go into a situation where it looks like there's a lot of work to be done. That's what happened when with San Francisco when John Lynch went there with Kyle Shanahan. A lot of work to be done. Uh, you know, people wondered, could you win there? Well, they've shown that they can, and it's with that approach. So he can bring some of that patient the weight and knowing how to build it the right way bring some of that to washington with an owner who say, likes to take a similar approach anyways so the other thing to know is bob myers God, there's so much that happened here today so bob myers former uh executive for the golden state warriors helped build them into a four-time champion um he was brought on board as a part of the advisory committee for the search do do believe he's going to stay here through the season at least in some sort of advisory role. Also, Rick Spielman, who was an NFL executive for many years, had him on the podcast a couple of weeks ago to discuss this job, this opening, what he thinks of it. So you can go listen to the podcast, but I'll tell you what we know is he's an NFL, former NFL executive. He's going to be part of the an advisory um, search panel. I think when it's all said and done, I think he probably won't stay much longer after that. I don't think, but his, his, Deep expertise in the NFL combined with a guy like Myers who knows how to build a winning organization. That's what you want. So you have people, you know, one thing, and I talked about this on here about thinking outside the box. That's part of that thinking is bringing in a guy like Bob Myers to think outside the box about what, how you look at building a team. It doesn't have to just be a football guy. Now to build a good football team, you need good football people to build a great organization. You need, you need people who know how to build a good organization, how to hire the right people. What's the kind of atmosphere you need to create so people flourish in that building? And so I think that's one of the things that Myers can bring to this search is knowing how to identify some of those principles that you, he used. And this is one of the things I think you have to, and I'm going to, I'll probably get into this a little bit later, but, you know, Josh Harris knows what he doesn't know. And I think that's a far, a far far cry from what the other owner was like. It's a good thing. Spielman knows the NFL. You also have guys like Magic Johnson, Mitchell Rails, Mark Gein. Magic, of course, one of the greatest leaders in, in sports history. So you have people who know how to build good organizations. The only thing I wonder is, do you somehow get too many voices in that room about what you want, what you need to do? But you do have people that are highly accomplished have done really good things in their fields and can identify the right traits and know how to put together a winning situation. We, I also know that Bob Myers, and this is what I was going to get to earlier with, with Adam Peters, they're friendly. Like <clears throat> Peters, yeah, Myers was around the 49ers facility a decent amount. So he got to know Peters a little bit. So I think that's going to 
clearly helped the situation. Myers, excuse me, Peters, if you recall, turned down chances to interview. I think it was with Tennessee and Carolina last year. <clears throat> This is a far better job than those. So I don't blame for waiting. He didn't have to jump at those. This one is far better, especially with who you have. Now, last year at this time, if he had taken this, different story, different guy. Now, be very good. Peters would be a big home run hire for, for Washington. Um, he definitely helped build San Francisco. Go listen to Nick's the podcast I did with Nick about two weeks ago. See what his role was. He was really good at identifying talent in some of those you know, the lower rounds of the draft after the first, second round, I think that's always, you build with the, that kind of draft depth. And it's why you end up with a Brock Purdy who does really well, but also because you have other parts that have flourished in that system, both sides of the ball. So, and the one thing to know too, on Harris, the way Josh Harris works. And again, I wrote a story about this several days ago about how Harris approaches his decisions, the big decisions. Um, hiring when he hired Daryl Morey, when he had to fire Doc Rivers, when he had to go spend on this big free agent, all things that are kind of comparable to what's going on here. One of the things you learn about him, when he wants that guy, he goes and gets that guy. Now, Snyder did that early in his career here, right? But he didn't do a whole lot outside that. But he could go get a guy. I think here are some, some of those qualities where you identify who is it that you want, then go get him. Doc Rivers was done deal within three days. When 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 Myers became available after the after he resigned from the Rockets, he thought he was going to take a year off and just kind of take a hiatus. Within it, within very soon after he was resigned, Harris was on the phone with them. Within a couple of days, he was in the Hamptons visiting Harris, and a few and that that was that's all it took. So when he wants that guy, he'll go get him. His what he told us today in the press conference, he would be rapid but thorough. That so. It wouldn't shock me at all if you have a head of uh, a president of football ops within a week or so. <clears throat> and, you know, then from there, what do you, then that person will decide, what do you do with the GM role? Do you do something there? And then what do you do with the head coach? But they've also put out requests for head coach, including for Detroit's Ben Johnson, the number one target by all parties this offseason. That's going to be interesting. And a couple of things to keep in mind with Ben Johnson. First of all, very well respected. You know who he coached at the Senior Bowl two years ago? Sam Howell. You know where he played quarterback in college? North Carolina. So you know who's a possible a number two pick in the draft? Drake May from North Carolina. There's a lot of ties there that would be, you know, that could be beneficial. We'll see. But he has a really good reputation, very smart. Um, but he is the number one target for a lot of teams listen, if you're looking between here and Carolina, it's a no brainer. And even if you're looking at like Atlanta, Atlanta has a good roster, but is it, is it a better situation than here? I can't, I don't know that it is. Um, and that's something I'll get into with Bram chargers. You have Justin Herbert. However, you have to win right away, right? Because you better win within a couple of years or that's the expectation because of what you have, because some of the parts you have in place, including Herbert. So do you have more of a chance to build here? Can you get a guy in the draft that you really like to say, not only do you have this, this, and this, but I can also get the quarterback that makes it more palatable. And you have a blank slate here. You got new owners. You probably get a long term, a longer term deal, more security. And I think a big thing is in a market that is far better for football than LA, the chargers, you know, listen, the Rams won a super bowl and they don't register. And the chargers are the number two football team in town. They don't, they're not in that neighborhood, right? So you can, you have a chance to come here to a, a situation that in more untapped potential than a lot of other places. So now we'll see what happens, but that was a name, Raheem Morris, former um, uh, defensive coach here with Washington. Now with the Rams, you know, going to get, they put in a request for him. I was, I always liked Raheem. I think he does a nice job. I think he's worked hard at both sides of the ball. So I think he's done a good job trying to reinvent himself as a coach or not even reinvent that's to grow as a coach and evolve. So when he gets a second chance that he can maybe make more of it than he had with Tampa Bay, um, Anthony Weaver, Baltimore associate head coach, defensive line coach, Aaron Glenn, defensive coordinator for Detroit, Mike McDonald, defensive coordinator for Baltimore. <clears throat> um, I like that they're going to talk to defensive coordinators only be, mainly because you cannot cut off one side of the ball. If you're looking for the best leaders, then you have to include them. The concern would be if you are drafting a young quarterback, can you, what happens like 
what's your plan on offense? Do you have a good plan? Let's Because if your coordinator comes in, look at Bobby Sloak in Houston. Sloak, I haven't heard his name yet here, but it wouldn't shock me. He's going to be a candidate, whether it's this year or next. But he's done a really good job with C.J. Stroud. D'Amico Ryan's done a hell of a job as a coach. But what happens if Sloak leaves this year or next year? Now you're starting it over for him. Is it another offense or do you have somebody in that system that could elevate to being a coordinator? So you need, if you have a defensive coordinator, they better be a really good leader, but you better have a really, really good plan for your offense. And how, how, how are you going to develop this quarterback as a defensive coach? So and that's, that's where it's like, you know, again, when Marty Schottenheim was here, I remember talking to him way back when, how he always wanted to have certain guys in the system who could develop and elevate. So if you lose a guy, you know, let's say in a couple of years, you lose a guy. Now you have a guy who's been groomed to take his place. That's how you do it. And so if you have that plan, you can make it work. If you don't, there could be problems because now you're changing systems every couple of years, never good for a quarterback, but I like that they're doing it. You should never cut off a side of the ball. If that's, if if McDonald's the best guy, then you hire the best guy. But, you know, I think you're going to look hard at offense because of where you have in the draft. Glenn, for the football ops department, Glenn Cook from Cleveland, Ian Cunningham from Chicago, we've talked about him. I, I know that I believe he may have met with Cook as well before, but he definitely knows he met with, met, Harris has met with Cunningham. Mike Borgonzi from Kansas City, Alec Halaby from Philadelphia. Um, so the, those are all guys that, and there's, there's a few other names that you're going to start, you know, I haven't heard the Catherine race or the Donna Ponte, another name that I know a lot of people like who feel he would be good in this role is a guy, Jake Rosenberg, who's also with the Eagles. So that's just another name. I haven't heard it connected to here yet, but it's a name that I've heard people talk about a lot as far as somebody who is, um, they feel would be qualified to do something like that here. Um, I know there's been smoke around Bill Belichick. Nope. That it's, it's not, it's not the match and it's, you know, it's, it's that rumor came up a month or so ago, a month and a half ago. And at that time it was shot down for me. And so nothing has changed. Um, I don't, I just, I, it's not even, I don't see it. It's, it's not, unless people are really, 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 really lying it's not something that is going to happen. And I don't see any reason why the people who have been truthful with me for a long time would do that. So anyways, just, you can scratch that off. Jim Harbaugh, I, I know there's a little bit of smoke there. I don't know that it's a lot of smoke. I really don't. Um, it doesn't, it's, it's to me, it's, when I've run that by some people, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of, lukewarm or so, you know, I don't know. I don't want to, I'm not going to dismiss it, but I'm also not going to say that, oh my gosh, there's a lot there. I don't, I don't, you know, and neither talking to people, I don't see a lot of momentum there, but I'm not, you know, I think there's going to be a lot more momentum with him with other jobs. Again, I don't see the fit being what these guys would want and, and knowing the reputation of all parties involved doesn't feel like it'd be a good long-term fit. Um, Eric Bienemy. No, I don't see that. Um, one of the things that too, that we came out from the players today in the locker room, we did talk to them and there was a couple of things that stood out. One, their affection for Ron Rivera. He spoke to the team today. He was fired around eight 20 or so. Um, <clears throat> he spoke to the team at nine o'clock for a meeting, spoke up for a couple minutes. They gave him a strong, pretty solid applause at the end of it. A lot of players went up to him, talked to him afterwards, a lot of affection for him. Listen, not, he didn't get the job done. So the move was made as, as, as Josh Harris said, they, he's, his quote was, we clearly weren't good enough. And he's right. So when that happens, these are the moves that are made, whether, regardless of your affection for someone or not. But um, so there was a lot there, but with the enemy, when you talk to guys, even now on the record, like Logan Thomas, after the game was talking about, there were a lot of ups and downs with him. There were a lot of times where they'd say at the end of it, like, you know, yes, it, w it wasn't all like negative. There was some like, he was good or he, this was up and down, up and down, up and down, but there was this, you know, there was some of that. And, you know, um, I know we talked to Charles Leno and somebody asked him about him and his comment was he was the same guy every day. And, and that's really all I'm going to say about that. So when guys say like stuff like that, it's, it's pretty telling. So I don't see him as a, as a legitimate candidate here. In fact, when Josh Harris was asked about it, he basically said, well, you know, we'll hire some for the football ops and, 
if he says something, then if he wants to go that way, then they would. But I don't, in terms of just even interviewing, but I don't, I don't see it. Um, you know, I don't, it's hard to see it here then. And basically, especially when you talk to players and all that, it just, it was a tough year for them. Um, and again, I would always say not everything was on him, on Bienemy. I think he came into a tough situation and had to make it work. And knowing that you pretty much had one shot, um, you know, mom spaghetti and all that. So shout out Eminem. But you only had that one shot and it you were doing it with a young quarterback with a with an offensive line that needed more help. But then you put that offensive line and a young quarterback in a situation where they had to be studs in, in the pass game and they couldn't be. They weren't. So, but again, it wasn't all on him, but it for whatever reason, it didn't work. Anyway, um the other part of of today was, you know, a couple um the Harris interview. As someone who's covered this team a long time, I think it was good to see an owner answering questions from the media and good to see him feeling comfortable addressing the media. I know that Harris doesn't always like those social, like having to do that, um, but he will. I think what I like with that, what it shows to me is he understands the responsibility of being an owner. And, you know, it's funny because Dan Snyder comes in and when he hires Ron Rivera and gives it the old goofy, happy Thanksgiving, it was all, oh, that was, I think I've told you before, that was a show, showing of his nerves because they had a sheet for him that said at the top of it, happy new year. He just botched it because he was very nervous, uncomfortable, whatever. So you didn't see that. You don't see stuff like that from Harris. I don't think he's, I don't think it's his favorite thing to do, but it's, he understands the responsibility to do it. And at the end of it, his comment was to be continued. Um, but he's very, he's comfortable in this role, in the role of being an owner and understanding the responsibility of being an owner. And, you know, one thing I, I think is coming through with this, when Snyder was here, and I always go back to compare because this is what, when you're seeing it, how different it is being run, it's it's interesting to compare. When Snyder was here, he was intent on showing you, hey, I'm a smart football guy. I know football. He didn't. OK, but he always wanted to show you that he always wanted to let you know that I remember having a conversation with him in his like his after his first full year going into a, like after one of the OTA practices, he's like, oh, I can just tell we have more speed out there. So really, you can see that. So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like he's BSing. He didn't know that someone told him that. And but he wants to show that to you. He wanted to show you that I know what I'm doing. And my thing was like, and people would say, oh, he just wants to win. Well, if you wanted to win, you're not hiring a dumbass like yourself, right? You're not going to hire you to run a football team when you don't know what you're doing. And that's what he would do. Josh Harris has taken the approach of, you know, I don't know this, so I'm going to hire this guy to help me do this, this guy to help me do that, this guy to help me do that. That's what he's done. And so I think that's something that is refreshing for this organization. I think it, again, it, whether or not it works this time, the approach works over time. And so I don't, you know, we, there's no guarantee that this move is going to be that whatever he hires right now, the first moves are going to be like, Oh my God, this organization is now transformed. They're going to win forever. Can't say that. We still have to see how it plays out. We still have to see who they hire. We still have to see then how they're on the field. Who do they draft? Do they draft the right quarterback or not? So all that stuff is going to matter but when you take a certain approach and you look for certain things and you you allow yourself to say, I need help in making these decisions in this area, then I think you set yourself better up for better success than most people. Um, and I think that's why he tire, targeted Myers and Spielman. And he, you know, he knows what he needs to be successful. Um, so, you know, like I said, that, that's I think that's a very good quality to have. And he also has a clear idea of how he wants his organization to look. He wants to have a certain structure and setup. I think there's some flexibility within that. Like if he he wants a, a head of football ops, you want then you want a GM, then you want a coach. That's the ideal thing. But what if the head of football ops can also be the GM? Well, then you just get that guy and you have two guys, do, you have one guy doing two jobs and then you get the coach. So that's, 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 that's also why Martin Mayhew is still here. Martin Mayhew was not fair. It was just Rivera today. And part of that is get the president of football ops to come in and then decide how they want it to set up and, and, you know, and, and with whom, and then they'll start to, they'll, 
it's not just, you know, so that's, that's one of the things that's why May he was still here, but that's where I think, like I said, Harris's flexibility with the setup comes in. However, there's a clear belief in that you need to have, you're not going to have two guys, one guy doing two roles like they had with, with Rivera being coach centric. And like I, I think I've told you before, I really don't, I don't believe that Rivera truly wanted that. It was what Snyder wanted and went and did it. And Rivera went with it. And if you're not comfortable in that role, you shouldn't take that role. That's what I would say. However, there's not going to be that kind of setup. You're not going to have a coach come in and have all sorts of power ahead of people that are making the other football decisions. And I think that's, again, I think that's a good thing. There's a strong belief in what, in, in with Harris and in, in doing that. And so, and you know, it's, um, somebody who's has clients on this list and, and I've talked to them before um, well, told me last night like th that this is a great job and the reason he said great resources great market um, I, again I told you I don't think LA can compete with this football market right um, and he felt like they have really good owners now uh, we'll see right we only know them here for for a handful of months they still have a lot more to prove i do like i said i think you get it by now that i think what they they're doing things the right way but then you still have to go prove that you can actually build it and win because that's what the goal is and then when you talk to guys in the locker room like cosme was very big on just want to win and you know i know some guys just say that i think some guys really mean that and i think he's one of them and and I think for Harris, like that's his passion is to try and build a winner here. And that's why you go out and get guys smarter than you in this area. You want to go do, build a business, get PE, you know, private equity, do all that. Harris is your guy. You want to build a football team, get the guy who can be that guy. And I think that's, that's just a smart, a smart approach by him. Oh. The other thing I like is when he said, he talked about during the press conference, somebody asked him about like how they see the roster and how close do they feel they are? Because that could matter is if you, if you tell a coach, like, oh, I think we're really close. And the coach says, Holy crap, you're not, you, it's going to be a hard marriage. So you need to be, have an idea of where you're at. Now, the one thing that he said in there, like, of course, the ideal thing is a quick, the quick turnaround is desired. But he said, when you do things too quickly, it can set you back. So the point there is you have to build it right. If you take shortcuts to, to get to that quick success, as we've seen here in the past, you take those shortcuts, you're not building it right. If you build it right, maybe you can sustain something. San Francisco has built it right. They have a sustainable product. Adam Peters knows that very well. So that's, that's the last thing I said on that. And then the other thing that he was asked, I know there are people here that are always going to be interested in the rebrand until they do something, at which point then... People who say good, well, then others will say, I don't like that name either. Whatever. He was asked about it, and he kind of kicked that to the side for now because, let's be honest, the job here is to build a good organization, and they're, they are taking their time doing this, and so the any sort of rebrand is, is not going to happen now. And I'd heard like before that like it, it would be at least a year or two before they might might consider it. Now, maybe they will, but it's not the priority now. And the priority now is building a good, good organization. And early in the year, they were 2-0 and and people were showing up to games. Late in the year, they were 4-12 and and nobody, they, they weren't showing up. It's not a coincidence. And when they had the name Redskins, I was at Dulles Town Mall in 2018 with Josh Norman on a Friday, watching him hand out tick, free tickets to a game when they were 6-2 and two going in, or 6-3 and three going into that Houston game before Alex Smith got hurt. They were passing out free tickets on the streets to get people to go. They were called the Redskins at that time. So build a good, build a really good product to sustain. And then you can get to that other part, but the priority has to be that. And that's why, and for people who say you can do two things at once, I don't think you have a great understanding of how intense that work is or not intense, how, how vast that is and how much resources you have to give to that, that if you're going to decide well, you can give the resources to here or here, we can put, kick this down the road because it's not an immediate priority. The immediate priority is building a good football operation and, and then you can go from there. Um, but anyways, I know some people are going to get upset at that, but, but that's, that's where they're at and that's why they're at where they're at. So I don't expect anything anytime soon. And again, I, with that question, like I, 
talk to people throughout this because I'm curious too. And it was always like, eh, maybe a year or two or so, something like that. So again, then after this, it's stadium. They've got to get all that stadium stuff done. There's so much on their plate that you simply can't do it all at once. And the priority now, get the football ops, get the GM, get the coach situation settled. Whatever the setup, however that's going to look, that's what they need to get settled. Today was the first step in that. And I think we're going to, I think, follow back throughout the week because we'll be, I'll be having episodes pr- almost every day um, because I think there's going to be news that warrants it or a lot of stuff to discuss about what's going on and kind of taking a look at some of the candidates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's it from me. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks all, as always for watching. I'll be back on Tuesday night with the Voice of the Commanders, 7.30 p.m. live stream show. Tune in, bring your questions. It's not a therapy Tuesday, folks, because we're looking ahead. I think we've got you through that therapy. And while it's a 4-13 and season, we could have a therapy session about the season. Uh Uh-uh. This is all looking forward because I think for you, the good stuff is down the road. And so I think you'd probably rather hear about that than about what went wrong. Anyway, that's it for me. I'll talk to you next time.